Hello Hacker, welcome back. Today we're going to go over brute forcing basic auth forms. So generally speaking on the internet, there's two types of forms. There's web-based authentication form and then there's basic auth form. Uh, web-based uh, authentication form sends the usernames in clear text. That would be a uh, username and password in clear text using parameters. Whereas basic auth form is a little different. Basic auth sends the username and password in kind of an obfuscated way. It uses base64 encoding to kind of quote unquote encrypt it as it goes over. Um, so we don't really care in this tutorial about um, whether it's clear text or not. What we really need to understand is the convention of how the username and password is sent over through the wire so that we can replicate that. So if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and download Proxy Switcher and configure your proxy settings to look like this. And also, if you haven't, download OAuth Zap. And this is the newest version as today. Uh, if you have those downloaded and configured, let's move on to the next phase. So now that our proxy is configured, we want to go ahead and capture traffic from the website which we're trying to gain access to. So in this case, we're going to try to gain access to a router. Um, on the on our proxy this is zap here uh, when we gain access or I'm sorry when we navigate to this page uh, we should see some traffic caught by uh, by our intercepting proxy so I'll just enter a few characters and click OK and then cancel out of there so now we can see uh, that it did capture some traffic from um, 192.168.1.1 and if we look um, at the outgoing, uh, the outgoing traffic, we can notice it says authorization basic, and then it has some letters and numbers here. Um, so what we're seeing here is HTTP header authentication, and if we highlight this these char this character set, and then go to decode, we're going to see admin colon test or some just different characters that resemble something similar to test. So now at this point, we want to look at that naming convention that we that we initially discussed. And that naming convention kind of breaks down in three separate phases. So first we need to understand what the username is, which we found already is admin. Uh, we need to understand the delimiter that separates the usernames and the password, which seems to be a colon. Um, and then we also want to know where the password is, which seems to be after the colon. And if we put that all together, um, we can see admin colon password, password one. And then at the end, it's, it's encoded in base64. So what I found to be the most effective method when constructing these types of password attacks is that you would take a password list and then prefix the username and delimiter at the end. So now it's time to build the actual password, username and password query string. So let's highlight the entire base64 URL. We're gonna right click and then go to fuzz. Just verify that the entire base64 string is highlighted and then select payloads. Then click add. This is where we're gonna add our password list. My password list is under file fuzzers. I'll be selecting the 500 worst passwords text feel free to import your own password list. Let's select add, click OK. Now that our password list is imported, let's go ahead and build that username and password string. This is done under processors, select add. Now what we're going to do is select prefix string and then add the value admin colon. Now if we generate the preview, we can see that admin colon and then the password is all together, just as we've known in that naming convention that we've seen previously. But we're missing one step, and that one step is to encode it in base64. So we'll select add to set that one particular processor, and then we're going to add another processor. So select add, and then navigate to where it says base64 encode, and then if you select generate preview, you're going to notice that that entire string is now base64 encoded. Select add, select OK, and you're ready to so go. So now that we have our username and password list configured, just as, there's just a few other things we want to check before moving forward. Uh, under options, you'll see a few different um, options here. And what we want to do is select follow redirects if it's not checked, and also increase the concurrent scanning to 10. 
Um, with HTTP based authentication, you could probably take this up to 20, even 30 um, in a real life scenario as uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty responsive to these types of, of attacks. So now that that's configured, we want to go down and do start fuzzer. And just like that, we went through about 500 combinations. And now it's time to inspect the size of the response body as well as the, uh, the response code. So let's scroll up to the top. And we can notice right here that there seems to be a, uh, a different message, right? Compared to all the rest of it. the response bodies changed, the reason has changed. Um, so let's select this one and then highlight <clears throat> this basic auth uh, string that we just created. Let's go to encode, decode. And at this point, we can see that the password seems to be password one. So if we go back to our original query, I'm sorry, original website, and we go admin, and then type password with the capital P, one is shown in our previously password list and click OK. Uh, we've gained access to the uh, to, to the router. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave them in the, uh, the comment box. And as always, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the pipes.